Speak to my heart, oh God. He does. <laughs> speak to my ears that I may hear. Speak to my heart. Speak to my soul. Speak to my mind. Speak to all that I am, that I might listen. Because, really, it boils down to the choice that we have to listen, to hear, and to consider, and then to make a decision based upon whether we will obey or disobey. Because, frankly, that's all it boils down to is just, do you obey or do you disobey? You can pretend that you don't know. Then why didn't you find out? You can pretend that you weren't told. Then why did you listen? You can pretend that you don't understand. Then why didn't you find out? You see, part of emotionals or devotionals as we read them and share them and as we listen to hear God speak to us is discovering that we can know, we can listen, we can obey. We can choose to go a different way than we've gone before. We can turn to the right or to the left. We can stand still and wait. We can recognize the voice of our Lord speaking to us. And we can hear God speak. The choice is yours of whether you want to hear him or ignore him. And that's a decision that only you can make as well as I. When you're tempted to tolerate evil, how much do you hate evil? Do you ever whitewash it, excuse it? Oh, for the approval of others, do you tolerate evil in their lives? Do you even call evil good? We live in a time of great tolerance of evil. We put up with it. We deal with it. We say that we hate it. But in reality, do you? Black is not black. White is not white. Gray is the color of choice when it comes to moral issues. Color everything gray, and all shades, depending upon your tolerance of darkness or light, will fit. Even some Christians think, just don't make the issues black or white. No absolutes, please. Absolutes are too rigid, too cramping, distasteful and intolerant. There's a little bit of good in everyone, and we need to see the good. After all, God does, or does he? Thinking, or should I say rationalizing like that, wearies God. It is against, and it is an assault of his nature, and his character, and his word. Listen to what he says to us in the book of Malachi. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, how have you wearied him? In that you say... <clears throat> In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or, where is the God of justice? Malachi 2.17 The phrase, where is the God of justice, implies that God is not going to judge sin. After all, where is he? <clears throat> to which God replies, Behold, I am going to send my messenger. He will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who can endure the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. Malachi 3, 1, 2. <clears throat> in other words, the Lord says, I am coming. Who can endure the day of my coming? And when he comes, he will draw near to you for judgment. And will be... A swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages, the widow and the orphan, and those who turn aside the alien and do not fear him. Malachi 3.5 Compromising men and women call evil good in the sight of the Lord and say that God delights in them, but that is a lie. God never compromises with evil. He only exposes evil for what it is, and then judges it. Jehoshaphat was a great king who sought the Lord God for, of his fathers, sending forth his officials so that they taught in Judah, having the book of the law, 
of the Lord with them. And they went throughout the cities of Judah and taught among the people. 2 Corinthians 17, 9. Yet there came a time when righteous Jehoshaphat made an alliance with the ungodly Ahaz, Ahab, king of Israel. It was this alliance that brought a severe rebuke from God through Yehu when he said to Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord, and so bring wrath on yourself from the Lord? Good question, isn't it? How would you answer it, beloved? What is your alliance with the ungodly? What is your allegiance to them? Your only allegiance ought to be to the love of God that would mourn over their sin and seek to rescue them from certain claims of judgment, which shall torment the wicked forever. However, to align with them or with their evil is to incur the judgment of God. Remember that. You serve a holy God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, it's often easier to compromise and to participate in the world and what it's doing than to go on with what God wants you to do, what God has chosen you to do, what God has declared in his word for you to do. Are you caught up in the social climate of change that right now is populating the world and is influencing Christendom to be a part of this movement? We can just, you know, sign our petition. We can get things changed in the name of the Lord. We can do this and do that with the ungodly ways and the with the ungodly and the godly so that we can create a better country, a better place to live, a better environment. The world is passing away in the lust thereof. What good would it do if you should change everything about you and not change what's within? There's always a righteous way to go that we say, oh, but we're searching for justice. We want justice and pursue justice. We seek justice. And justice is coming in the judgment of God. But in the meantime, salvation has come and God has decreed, will you obey him? Will you go and teach all nations or will you go and try to save all nations? There's a difference. You see, if you're seeking to teach the nations how to be a democracy or how to be self-governing or how to have free enterprise or how to have freedom, then you're missing the boat because there is no freedom. That in reality is a deception. You are either under God's authority or you are under Satan's authority. You have no freedom to exercise of your own. You are a slave to sin. And until your body dies, you will be. But your spirit shall be free unto the Lord and serve him. So really, the question is, because God created you for his own good pleasure, why do you get carried away about freedom when in reality you were never free? You have a choice to make of where your destiny will be. And how you will spend that time is how you spend it now. Are you wasting time? Ask God what he would have you to do. I think you may be surprised. There might be someone who might be needing you to share the salvation the Lord would bring.